CV. And in today's video, we're going to be talking more about the dark history of freak shows and freak show performers. I did a video on this probably about a year ago and talked about four or five of the really popular performers. And today I have, I think, four more. There are so many I could talk about. So if you want me to make this into a series, definitely give this video a thumbs up. I find this stuff so fascinating, but it's also really, really sad what these people went through. But before I get into that, I just want to mention, if you have not seen my previous video, I have come out with new summer merch. Here it is. The design says my wings are just hiding right now, meaning that uh, I'm a secret fairy. And it's so cool because the wings are actually on the back of the shirt. Let me show you. So as you can see, back here are the wings and it says Jesse B inside of the wings. And yeah, I just love this design so much. I've been wearing it everywhere. This is the white version of the t-shirt, but it also comes in a charcoal gray. And we also have tank tops available. Those come in white and black. So the t-shirts are very true to size, but I just want to mention again that the tank tops are a loose fit. So if you would like it to fit you snugly, definitely size down. But yeah, this is my new favorite design. If you guys would like one, I have linked it down below. So if you're a secret fairy, this one's for you. All right, so let's get into the dark history of freak shows. During the 1800s, Phineas Taylor Barnum, better known as P.T. Barnum, became famous as the great American showman. Barnum specialized in displaying odd and intriguing attractions to audiences who were eager to pay to see something out of the ordinary. One of the main ways Barnum drew crowds was to exploit abnormalities in human beings. These displays became known as his freak shows. They traveled all around the world. People paid so much money to see all of his freaks. And it should be noted that the term freaks is a very outdated and very offensive term. The only reason why I'm using it in this video is because I'm talking about it historically. But the thing is, these people were simply just people, normal people that had unique traits. Some people were just born with disabilities, had unique talents. But back then, people just found them so odd and were willing to pay money to just go and stare at them, essentially. Really messed up, makes me really sad, but like I said, it is a huge part of our history. And today I'm going to be talking about four more of these performers talking about their lives and talking about how being in these shows actually changed their lives drastically. First, we have Isaac W. Sprague, and he was known as the Living Skeleton. For some reason, Isaac began losing weight at the age of 12. And in 1865, during a visit to a local carnival, a promoter spotted Isaac and offered him a job. Now, at first, he refused this job, but soon he realized that he could probably make a good living capitalizing off of his looks. So he joined a circus sideshow becoming the Living Skeleton, or also known as the Original Thin Man. In less than a year, he auditioned for P.T. Barnum, and he was hired at a salary of $80 a week. By the age of 44, he was five foot six and only weighed 43 pounds, which is absolutely terrible. He then died at the age of 46, but during his life, he actually got married and had three very healthy sons. But yeah, most of his life, he was scary thin, very malnourished, very sick, very weak. It was not very good. Next, we have Joyce Heth, who was known as the 161-year-old woman. The very first human attraction that began P.T. Barnum's career was a woman named Joyce Heth, who he claimed was 161 years old. Now, she was blind. Her eyes looked sunken into her head, which really gave her the appearance of being extremely old. She also went on and on about the time she spent being the wet nurse of George Washington, and Barnum wrote in his biography that he paid $1,000 for her, and apparently he said he became her new owner. Keep in mind, this was during the 1830s, so slavery was still legal in the United States. So Barnum took her on a huge tour starting in New York City, and then he traveled all along the East Coast. Now, if you're wondering why people would pay so much money just to see this old woman sitting in a chair, it's because she looks scary old. Like, people believed that she was almost 200 years old. In fact, she looked so old that when newspapers came to see her and write about her, they literally thought she was like a robotic puppet or something because she didn't look real. Now, Joyce died in 1836, and when doctors actually performed an autopsy, they found out that she was only 80 years old when she died. In fact, there was so much speculation about her true age that 1,500 people actually paid money to go and watch her autopsy being done so they could 
could see and hear for themselves how old she actually was. Next we have Chang and Ang Bunker, and they were known as the original Siamese twins. Twin brothers Chang and Ang were possibly the most famous of all sideshow or freak show performers. They were born conjoined at the chest, and in 1829 they were found swimming in Thailand. This promoter named Robert Hunter paid their parents to basically take them, and the parents gave them the rights to exhibit them as the Siamese twins. Kind of messed up if you ask me. Now these two twins toured with Hunter and they would do backflips, they would play badminton, they would just shock all of the crowds. After years of performing they were tired of doing it, they didn't want to perform anymore, they were just done with the show business so they decided to retire to have a normal life. They bought a house in North Carolina and married two sisters and they actually fathered 21 children between them. The sad thing is in 1874, Ang awoke to find that his brother Chang had died of a stroke in his sleep. And by the time a doctor arrived to try and separate him, Ang had already died. So that is a super tragic story as well. And lastly, we have the Seven Sutherland Sisters. Now they were adopted daughters of Fletcher Sutherland and their names were Sarah, Victoria, Isabella, Grace, Naomi, Mary, and Dora. And they were trained as a Barnum and Bailey Circus musical act with a show-stopping twist. So they would go up on stage, they would all sing together, they had these beautiful voices, and then the sisters would take down their hairdos towards the end of their performance, and their winding brunette tresses would tumble to the floor. Now apparently it says that all together the Sutherland sisters had nearly 37 feet of hair. Now their father realized that their songs could only take them so far because people eventually get bored of hearing the same songs over and over, so he capitalized on their long locks by concocting a Seven Sutherland Sisters hair grower. With their circus act providing the free publicity, this hair tonic sold very, very quickly. Apparently, it earned them $90,000 in only their first year of marketing it, and back then, that was a crazy amount of money. In fact, hair tonic sales allowed the Sutherland Sisters and their legendary manes to retire from the circus, but their empire eventually crumbled at the turn of the century when bobs and other short hairstyles came into vogue. So after that, their uh, hair tonic wasn't selling anymore. But they did already make a ton of money off of it, so I don't really know. Anyways, so guys, those are the four performers I'm going to be talking about today. If you would like me to do another video talking about more, I definitely can. I think it is important to get their actual story out there instead of just focusing on what they look like because they are human beings. They do have a real life story. And yeah, I just think it's really important to talk about this somewhat disturbing history. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy enjoyed this video. Don't forget if you guys would like one of the new summer shirts, I have linked it down below. But I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!